When are you going to pass mm -hmm. the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act? Okay. Can we do that this afternoon, Congress? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there's that. Um, yeah. We're going to talk about, we got to talk about Ronald Green, just the latest uh, brutal, brutal attack. Uh, you know, I was thinking over the weekend, and we've talked about this before. We have organized crime on our hands. This is a criminal enterprise. I, this is a criminal enterprise. I'm talking about policing in America, the descendants of slave catchers, which I'm never going to stop saying, and I don't care who rolls their eyes or who's sick of it. Um, but that's what we're talking about here. And so when you look at, remember, remember, um, because you and I know a little bit about our history, probably still learning more every day as we talk about on this show, but remember the story about why Emmett Till's mother wanted that open casket. I told you, I mm -hmm. found that jet magazine in my grandma's house and I'm still haunted mm -hmm. by that picture of what he looked like after he had been brutalized by disgusting, white, angry, racist, pigs, right? Um, <clears throat> she, we needed, she needed the country to see it. Black folks knew what was going on, okay? I don't think black folks needed to see it, but white people did. You know, the white people who were going about their business, who weren't necessarily lynching anybody, just going about their business, living their separate lives of privilege. Everyday white people, not rich, not, you know, just everyday white people needed to see what had been done to that boy in the South. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it, it dawns on me that here we are again, Ronald Green in the autopsy photos, the disgusting <clears throat> round them up. Not only are they not rounded up, they still on the force, still patrolling mm -hmm. black men. Um, the country needs to see all of it. I was so disgusted all weekend as I, I kept kind of turning the sound down as he's begging talking about I'm your brother. He wasn't their brother. They're, they're filled. Mm -hmm. He was not their brother. Okay. Um, so we have organized crime on our hands. And the more people see Ronald Green, Emmett Till, maybe they'll see it too. And then good people like mm -hmm. us start talking about defunding the police because we understand what that means. Um, so it's tough to have a good weekend when you're a black person, which is why I said on Friday, it would be great if every good white person was uncomfortable every single day of their lives. If everything was uncertain for good white people, I think that would be a beautiful thing. And that doesn't make me, you know, this radical Sharon. That would be a good thing because finally folks would get it, not just empathize, but get it to be immersed in that uncomfortability, that thing that you can't control no matter how much schooling, <coughs> education, church, you just can't control it. I think that would be so terrific if white people everywhere were just simply uncomfortable walking down the street. But I think you, you may have started out by just asking me how my weekend was, I think, or maybe I just took it. No, I mean, like, look, I, I, I think this might be the first time I'm actually saying something other than the T, but that's okay. That's fine. I understand you. Sometimes when, when it comes <laughs> to us, we have to let go. Yeah. And we talk about this. Yeah. This is still uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, and I talk about it yeah. all the time. You have to let go of your trauma. You have to let go of your pain. You have to have an outlet because for so long, we have suppressed this type of hurt, this type of pain, yeah. these types of feelings. And we've allowed that to simmer inside, and it's literally started to kill us. You know, you brought up Emmett Till, oh, and yeah. I, I've always said that that video, uh, the nine minutes and 29 seconds of George Floyd being snuffed out, because that's what it was, a snuff film, uh, being killed under the, uh, the knee of uh, the murderer, Derek Chauvin, who's now in prison for that. Uh, that was the modern day Emmett Till, because the nation, like you said, they needed to see something like that, similar to what uh, Mamie uh, Till did for uh, Emmett Till, the 14 year old who was killed uh, in Mississippi. Uh, they needed to see that shock and that outrage and it changed. You started seeing more people empathize and understand because there have been others, many others, who have been murdered at the hands of police officers. And you know, you, you saw protests, but mainly you saw black people protesting. But one thing about George Floyd's death, it brought a lot more people to the forefront as far as what we call, what do we call them? We call them not sympathizers, we call them- uh, Allies. Uh, uh, um, 
allies. That's what we call them. Uh, we saw people from Asia, around the world. It wasn't just here in the United States. Asia, Canada, Europe, everywhere. Uh, Africa, obviously. Here in the United States, you go to some of the rallies. If you went to some of the rallies last year, you saw just as many non-black people as you saw black people there. So yeah, I thought it did rally this country. But once again, like you said, it's still important to continue to feel that way and not get comfortable because for every George Floyd conviction, we still have uh, Dante Wright. We still have uh, uh, Makai Wright. We, we, I mean, uh, Makai uh, mm -hmm. Bryant. We still have, um, once again, a Ronald Green. We still have an Andrew Brown. We still have countless of others who weren't killed but har harassed uh, like the Lieutenant uh, Nazario uh, in Virginia uh, in Pepper Spray. So these things are still continuing. So yeah, we are about to mark the one year anniversary of the death of George Floyd. But once again, the work continues even after the conviction of Derek Chauvin and we'll see what happens to the other three police officers. Yeah, so yeah, I get it, I understand. You gotta let it out and there's nothing wrong with allowing your feelings to go because we have for so long as black people held that in for so long. Sorry to start the show off on such a, a, a very uh, hard or maybe a, um, a, a heavy note, but once again, like Sharon said, sometimes that is the plight of, of black people uh, for a lot of people here in this country. So we, we promise to, to be a little lighter, but at the same time, we still have to remember what we're going through in this country. So no, it's appropriate, like you said.